Um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you uh, for joining us again. The FRCS Mentor Group is uh, running again. We've got a good showing from our mentors again. They're volunteering uh, to uh, their free time to help uh, uh, our participants. Uh, Abdullah Hanoun, Samir, uh, Samir Garwali, and Hania Badasi are uh, here. They'll be asking uh, questions at the uh, at the end of the session via the questions. And today we have Sidrith Kamet, who's one of our newest mentors, and uh, has recently passed the exam. And he's going to talk to us about uh, how he's going. Sorry, most cited evidence in the exam, uh, quoted papers, and evidence in the exam. Um, as always, uh, this part will be recorded and put onto YouTube, but the Viva session afterwards will not be. And of course, uh, all participants can request a CPD certification through the Telegram group at the end. Uh, uh, Sidra, thank you very much. Uh, if you'd like to share your screen and start. Hello, everybody. So uh, here we go. Today's topic is commonly quoted evidence. Uh, a lot is spoken about evidence in uh, FRCS exams and uh, actually everybody talks about it. The reason why everybody talks it is because of one uh, very simple and common fact that one of the stations of, in your entire um, uh, YY and Plinker will be bad, definitely. And you'll, you might score five, which needs to be updated somewhere else and the only way uh, other than talking logically, you can um, grade it to seven or eight is by committing a sensible uh, evidence. The evidence, the way you tell evidence is very important to you to basically a good candidate will tell what type of study it is, how many patients were there and details of it. But if you tell whether the level of the study, title of study, uh, whether it's a uh, multicentric or in one center what's the conclusion clearly i think that should suffice uh, for the examiner to give you a seven or eight so uh, we go to this thing called uh, sorry excuse me so um, it's an evidence based orthopedics which is practiced nowadays and lots of lots of evidence and basically we pick uh, the evidence which is strong and apply to the practice and then appraise it and see what how does it work and then um, do uh, further studies or meta-analysis etc so there is a pyramid so before we go to pyramid i will tell you about what is evidence if you really read a textbook those uh, classification and those concepts which are there in the books for example like um, cmc joint arthritis is associated with carpal tunnel syndrome is actually evidence so if you go on reading there will be uh, there's a lot of evidence which you actually uh, theoretically can say I, this is um, if you got a viva station with cmc joint arthritis in history i'll also um, uh, ask uh, uh, symptoms of carpal tunnel because there's evidence that 38 percent of people with cmc joint arthritis got carpal tunnel so when you utter a word evidence, if you are doing all right or average, it gives examiner an opportunity to tick a box and uh, take you to just next level. So when you can use evidence, you can use evidence, any scenario nowadays, uh, other than basic science is either x-ray clinical situation or photograph. It, you have to start with history. So you can use evidence in history. Examination. Uh, investigations and treatment for example history i already give an example you can say that uh, uh, cmc joint arthritis is associated with carpal tunnel syndrome or um, in examination you can say uh, like uh, he's called he's, 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 he's got um, uh, hemarthrosis so it is 70 percent associated with acl injury in man, uh, in investigation we can use for example uh, uh, musculoskeletal infection society score or pervasive score to say that this is uh, investigation we go got uh, a uh, predictable outcome score uh, which can quantify a condition or a diagnosis condition and how you will use that's that's important a very good candidate will tell about everything about the paper uh, 
you will tell about a title which year what type what level it was what type was the study and everything but uh, a, a a generally or a average candidate like me or some of us will show will tell about summary just the title and the summary what's the conclusion of study and i think that is quite enough because examiners are really unless one of if they have read the paper completely and uh, they know exactly details you don't really know you just need to know what it means so uh, if you see a pic of a a pyramid of the levels there are five levels level well is uh, either uh, rct which is randomized controlled trials often binded often double binded or systemic reviews of that level 2 is cohort studies level 3 is case control studies level 4 is case series and level 5 is a general consensus or expert opinion or professor's opinion etc so there are some common um, evidence which i want to just uh, highlight to you it's not a exhaustive list neither it's a very detailed thing about each and every study it's just a highlight which uh, which give uh, a bullet point for you to mention or if you're interested you can read it further so this is very important paper and examiners love it because this is uh, this was uh, this is a paper which was released when arthroplasty has really picked the examiners were uh, at that time really enthusiastic and were in 35 40s so it was done by lidwell uh, and it shows the effect of ultra clean air which means uh, uh, one with the uh, laminar flow in operating theater on deep sepsis and deep sepsis in joint uh, replacements they found that uh, the ultra clean theater is the most predictive predictor of the infection and the infection rate drastically comes down with ultra clean theater there are figures available i don't want to mention because you have to remember them they also studied same time about prophylactic antibiotics and they found that prophylactic antibiotics also reduce the uh, chance of uh, deep sepsis in joint replacement and they are talking about hip and knee replacement uh, this was a, this is actually a classic paper now there are studies after that in australia we they said ultra clean theater is not really that important but this uh, nobody will blame you to mention this because this is a very important this can come also come in basic sciences when you are asked about how to prevent infection or a joint gets infected what you will do so next one is um, i've just randomly picked them but it will give a variety about uh, clavicle fractures clavicle of mid shaft clavicle displaced fracture is not really uncommonly asked so robinson in 2013 had compared non operative versus uh, operative uh, treatment of displaced mid shaft clavicle fractures it was a randomized control trial and they found that um, the the there were better outcomes for displaced fracture when treated operatively there was a better functional return reduced non inherent rate but it was expensive and complications were high so this is uh, now uh, this is quite a lot followed because most of us we see the indication when if there is a clavicle fracture you can say the indication of fixations are tanting on skin its compound neurovascular injury etc etc but you have to mention this paper because you can say robinson has said that if the fracture is displaced short and usually uh, more than 2 cm then the orif gives better um, outcome going to next uh, thing is a proper uh, trial which is quite uh, uh, it's it a very heterogeneous trial it is basically uh, talking about the displaced fracture of proximal humerus in adderley and they uh, uh, tried various thing like uh, plate fixation um, and compared them with the non surgical treatment and they they have uh, shown that there is no no difference how there is a controversy as the uh, 
they have really the trial is really heterogeneous they have taken a wide age group of people and there is uh, there are different surgeons some of them are experienced in uh, treating shoulder fractures some are trained so there's no uh, a a strict uh, uh, explicit card criteria but you have to mention this proffer trial and i think the next proffer proffer two trial is coming up on or in the process which i don't know about so one of the authors is rangan who's uh, it was published in 2015 then again draft trial this was in may uh, in uh, in 2015 we got uh, uh, matthew one of the authors it was a, a randomized control trial of percutaneous fixation with k wires and compared it with the uh, 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 DVR plate fixation, which is a vora-looking plate, and this was done for dorsally displaced fracture in the adults. And again, they found that there was no difference between two groups. However, this is a general, uh, uh, general, uh, in general uh, feature which is can be mentioned. And many times, evidence can be mentioned in negative way. For example, if you have showed a uh, displaced dorsally displaced fracture. with intra articular element and there is some um, you think it's unstable fracture we can say i have uh, i would uh, in this situation you will be wondering how i can use this because the evidence says that no difference and you want to say i am going to plate it so you can say uh, i'm going to treat this patient um, uh, surgically because this is a intra articular displaced unstable fracture however i know about draft trial which did not show any difference so you are adding evidence and helping examiner to put a tick box one of the very important things you have to know is that on the day of examiner your knowledge is much more you know, fresh and you and probably wider but examiner knows when you uttered the wrong things so unless you utter wrong thing you utter something which is not drastically wrong examiner drizzly doesn't take the minor points unless you say something really drastically wrong mm. so next is uh, so sort of just the doc you're absolutely correct in what you've said about the draft trial that there is no uh, evidence of difference between plating and k wiring um but it's very important to understand the exclusion criteria for this and the large uh, dropouts Uh, or crossover of the patient group was the patients the inclusion criteria was patients that you could reduce the articular surface congruently uh, so be very careful in saying all wrists are the same in the exam uh, they're not it's the draft trial was very specific if you could close reduce the fracture then it's uh, it makes no difference um sorry to disturb you it's just uh, i know that that's what you meant but it's quite important that that distinction is made yeah so uh, next paper is actually really important paper and i i would really uh, 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 advise candidates to read this this is a old requires 2005 which basically uh, tells about how to fix a Uh, intercondylar distal humerus fracture uh he his mentions actually he's got two aims which say that fixation in the distal part of fragment should be in distal fragment should be maximized and whatever you do in distal fragment should add to the final stability of the reconstruct and he has given several points like the screw should catch multiple fragments should catch as as many articular fragments as possible they should interlock with other side screws uh, plate should be 90 90 degrees and so on uh, so this is a, one of very important paper if you get a, uh, a patient or a viva station with um, uh, intercondylar fracture which is displaced and you are talking about orif then you have to tell about this paper it's all described paper in 2005 which um, tells about fixation in the intercondylar distal fracture distal humerus fracture so next one is uh, about tendo achilles this is another uh, important uh, meta analysis i put one of the authors uh, 
which say that uh, there is no difference between the uh, no significant difference, no statistical difference in the re-rupture rate as well as strength, whether you treat patients with the uh, uh, operative or non-operative. And what in when they say non-operative, what they mean is uh, uh, using a functional uh, uh, splint like a um, uh, air cast put where you can use wedges to plant a flex you can uh, make the uh, make the patient weight pair etc so they found there's no difference in two rates but the operative definitely gives uh, uh, more complications this is for a fresh achilles tendon if there's a re-rupture then it's different issue altogether all right this is another important paper it uh, tells about a displaced intraarticular calcaneal fracture it is a rct done by uh, buckley in 2002 which shows that uh, the treatment of non operative are almost are equivalent to the that of operative um, group however they have identified some uh, subgroups which uh, get which give better uh, outcome which are like women uh, people who are less than 29 and people who are not uh, having workers compensation i've briefly gone to the hill trial which was done in uk which also shows there is no difference right so another trial is uh, white tree trial for uh, Thompson's versus Exeter and Unitrex for uh, in displaced intracapsular intra fracture of feet. They have written something like no difference in health outcome. Now, many of these patients uh, had lost follow up and they could not get enough data. So, they are the way they uh, told the summary they, it appeared that they were not really strong in the uh, strong in the committing themselves that is no definite outcome however uh, they have basically uh, seen the complication rates and there were not much statistical difference between all three then this is important trial if you get a uh, patients with polytrauma a, a x-ray of uh, uh, open book pelvis and you're talking about resuscitation and then you have to talk about tranexamic acid and then you have to tell about crash two trial there was crash one trial now this is crash two trial and there'll be another crash three trial which um, tells about head injury uh, what's the effect and uh, on the uh, risk of death with head injuries so uh, crash two stretch and uh, two trials shows that enter bleeding trauma patients uh, tranexamic acid uh, reduces the risk of death. All right, and uh, it is given two ways. One is one gram stat, and then one gram over uh, IV over eight hours in infusion. Now you know about caucus criteria, which is uh, differentiating between the uh, transient synovitis and septic arthritis. If you you had asked about uh, a limping child mention this i will use cocker uh, criteria when you are talking about uh, differentiating between transient synovitis and septic arthritis it's, it goes it gives uh, a score and prediction for example if there are all four uh, points possible then it's around 99 percent if it is three it's 93 94 percent etc there is another paper which uh, talks about uh, CRP being most important predictor of uh, 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 septic arthritis, which you can read further. Right. Now, this is another very important paper and it's almost life-saving to be frank with you. Sufi is a really con controversial paper and this is an algorithm uh, and a, by Southampton and uh, Mr. Oglo has put it really well. Mm, I can put uh, uh, I can show you the algorithm. Just give me one second because I, I thought it's very important for you know, to know. This is the algorithm uh, for Sufi. So what he says is basically if it's uh, stable or it's unstable, you have to differentiate between two. So stable ones, you can uh, screw in situ 
if it's one or two hours neck osteotomy if it's unstable then you have to operate within 24 hours uh, it's uh, sorry if it's unstable you have to again uh, operate immediately and you have to ideally take him to the children's unit and to, uh, it is to be done there grade three if it's less than 24 hours you can do neck osteotomy if it's more than 24 hours you can put in traction and do neck osteotomy later and this is a really important if you really understand this algorithm it is a really life saving for sufi right oh sorry and then this common paper that's very uh, really uh, commonly uh, talked paper by hand surgeons, especially with the Davis paper 2009, which shows about, uh, uh, tells about trapezectomy, where they can just do a, a trapezectomy or you want to do, you have to do LRI tie or stabilization with K wire. And Davis said that at uh, three months and one year, there's no difference between uh, uh, um, between the, all these procedures. And there are uh, more studies which really go in this line. Now, uh, about uh, we had a, a, a musculoskeletal infection society score, major and minor criteria. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a pervasive paper in 2018, which gives more uh, uh, point wise and it takes into consider major criteria as well as some extra criteria like uh, sinual uh, 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 WBC, sinual CRP. Uh, D dimer, leukocyte estrage, etc. And if it's a score, if the score is more than six, then it is surely pos uh, septic. If less than three, is not septic, and between two is uh, intermediate. So this is a, another important paper. Uh, when you are uh, when when uh, there are some trials which really uh, is important to mention because one is if you have put a ankle uh, arthritis x-ray you can say whether whatever as per your experience and the patient presentation whether you would like to go for a uh, arthrodesis or arthroplasty but taro taro trial is ongoing trial it's a multicentric which uh, uh, which compares um, ankle arthrodesis with ankle arthroplasty so we can mention the taro trial is going on but i would like to do this is depending on the situation CRASH 3 trial, as I said earlier, also compares a head injury and uh, tranexamity, uh, tranexamic acid when you give for a patient for trauma and got head injury. Seesaw trial is actually on uh, impingement syndrome of shoulder. Uh, there, is, there is some data which tells there is no, there is uh, not much difference between conservative treatment with steroid and physiotherapy with um, uh, with uh, arthroscopic decompression. And there is another RCT for a reverse or hemiarthroplasty for fracture proximal humerus in elderly people. Now, other, other things which can be used as evidence probably is Bosch guideline. There are a lot of them. There are 13 of it, ankle fractures, wrist fractures, spinal fractures, poly, uh, uh, and um, supracondyl fractures, etc. You can also not really many people go through the nice guidelines for osteoarthritis and osteoporosis and it's, it is quite a good thing to go because uh, these are uh, sorry for that so uh, it's worth mentioning and it counts at what they are what is the NGR data and it this osteoarthritis osteoporosis guidelines are really easy to know and you can just get a tick mark. Now, it might not really make a big deal in practice, but to pass this exam, it definitely has some impact. Uh, and thank you for listening. It was my first attempt in presenting, so. Well, well done, Sidworth. Um, there are quite a few uh, papers there that you've shown. Yeah. Um, is there any questions from the participants? 
Is there any questions from the participants? I just want to add two important papers. The first is a paper from Cambridge, when to do arthrodesis and when to do arthroplasty for the ankle osteoarthritis. It's a very important paper yeah. to quote. The next uh, one, the paper from Cam Cambridge as well for hallux valgus. It summarizes the treatment for hallux valgus. It's very good. And lastly is the post guidelines, which should be OOST for a pathological fracture or mess in the bone. There is yeah, a very I'm important guidelines for that. Yeah. Absolutely. There are, first of all, the most, uh, we, we use the word guideline, but they're not guidelines, they're standards. Um, the oh, yeah. and, no, no, I appreciate it. It's just I remind myself because I use the word guideline as well a lot. Two more guidelines I would really like to mention. One is a uh, guideline, the nice guideline of uh, people who present with metastasis with unknown primary. It's wonderfully, wonderfully given in nice guidelines. And uh, we practice, there's a nice protocol for that. And as uh, Hany said, uh, the spine, metastatic spinal cord compression, which is uh, again, a very good um, um, guide, um, guidance from NICE. Yeah. So anywhere where there is these type of guidance and or standards that are published, um, they, they literally are literature reviews and best evidence. So if you quote them, that is quoting a paper, but you have to be sure that you're quoting them correctly uh, and uh, accurately, because if you make one mistake in them, they will pin you down on it. Because it is a sta they're all standards. They are the standards of care and treatment that we are expected to provide. Um, Siddharth, thank you so much. Could you thank you very much, Siddharth. That is a, good, a very good um, um, view, or, uh, sorry, review of all these important papers that are very, very commonly quoted. I, I congratulate you on the, your choice of, of the papers. These are the ones that are very common. However, like everything else in life, there is a hierarchy of evidence. So not all evidence is equal. So for example, things like the NICE guidelines, the BOST guidelines or standards, it's not only that you have to quote them to get eight. I believe, and I'm sure that it is shared by some, if not all the mentors, if you misquote them or you don't know them, that, is, that means you are unsafe and probably they may harshly downgrade you. Because for example, management of open fractures, if you don't know both guidelines, okay, they can say you're unsafe. The same thing for supracondylar fracture of children, the same thing. So these are the best, the top of the hierarchy. So if you, it's not, you, you don't have an option whether to quote it or not. It is a must. Same as got NICE guidelines. Yeah. Then the next level down would be the multi-central center trials that are run by the UK including the prof her, the seesaw, the, um, the, the digital radius draft, and all of these, just because they are multi-central and they are done in the UK and it is quoted and discussed and debated and created a big wave that you would be buried, you would, you would have been burying your head in the sand if you are not aware of them. Again, yeah. so this is the next level down. The next level down would be a, a well, sent, well done uh, classical papers, for example, Mirel score, for example, all these international crash trial and things like that. Again, this is the next level down. And then the obscure smaller results, uh, sorry, studies that are done here and there. And marking you will differ depending on the evidence. For example, missing a nice guideline, as I said, means that you are unsafe while misquoting a small obscure trial that the examiner may not have heard of, you may get away with that. I'm not, I'm not encouraging anyone to make things up, but what I'm trying to say is there is a hierarchy and in your studying, you have to focus on the more important ones first, make sure that you understand them very well and that you understand the ins and outs of them before moving to the next level, before moving to the next level. The thing that would fail you is if you start chasing all these small studies before making sure that you are very strong in the big ones. Um, and, and this is, this is my, my quote on the matter. Yeah, um, so just uh, to remind people, the, the hierarchy of evidence 
is actually we call the pyramid of evidence. We're not talking about that here. That, that pyramid of evidence is a basic science question, so you need to know no, no. it really well. Sorry, our, yes. Our, our one is the pyramid of evidence or the hierarchy of evidence for the UK FRCS exam. Sidwar, that was excellent. As always, um, anybody that wishes to claim a CPD point a certificate from us can make the request in the Telegram group to Firas Arnott. Um, and we will uh, end the session here and we'll start the Viva sessions uh, straight afterwards. Do not go away. Thank you very much. Well done.